Good morning, First Christian Church. Welcome to Easter morning. Christ is risen. Amen. Would you please join me for our call to worship in our order of worship from 1 Corinthians 15. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firm to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. Christ is risen today. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Holy Father, in Jesus' name, as we greet the Son this morning, we greet the true Son of God. And as bright as this sun is breaking over the building now, we know that the return of Christ will be brighter than a thousand suns. We praise your name, that we serve and praise a living Savior. We ask that the Holy Spirit would be with us now to convict us, to give us joy, and to remind us of our eternal hope in Christ. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. My friends, this is Easter morning. This is the day that we get to celebrate that Jesus Christ did go to the cross for us, but God the Father did not leave Jesus Christ in the dust. Jesus tells us in John chapter 11, He says, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in Me, though you die, you shall live. And if you believe in Me, in fact, you shall never die. This is the hope that we have, that we have become united with Christ in a death like His through faith. Therefore, we will be united with Christ in a resurrection like His. This morning, our prayer is for the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to spread out and con to convict the world. The hope we have is not how strong the church is in ourselves. Our hope is upon the rock which the church has built. This is our joy. This is our strength. Let us pray. Holy Father, today we pray a blessing. We ask that you would spread your gospel this Easter morning across our city, our nation, to every stretch and part of the world. We pray in Jesus' name that you would send the Holy Spirit, which is promised to convict hearts of their need for Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that Jesus said that upon the rock of his gospel, he will build his church. Father, we pray that as we rejoice in what Christ has done, that his resurrection would not just be for him, but for billions of people to receive him as Lord and to rise from the dead at their time as well. God, forgive us, we pray, for how we live lives unworthily of the gospel, Convict our hearts, Father, to remember that one day we will face Jesus face to face at the final judgment. He'll receive us with grace. May we come to Him with obedience and with a life worthy of what He's accomplished. Father, give us the steel of the Holy Spirit, the assurance of salvation, a passion for Your Word, and a desire to see others one to Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Since we've been celebrating Christ Jesus outside, we've had to change our order of worship a little bit. And normally we sing the doxology when we're bringing forward the abundance God's given us financially. I've really enjoyed that we've got to sing the doxology for the sacrament. Because truly, God has provided. The hill upon which Isaac was to be sacrificed and God stopped him through his father Abraham is called the Lord will provide. Many believe that same hill to be Calvary on which Christ Jesus was crucified. Often you hear people say the Lord will provide if I have a financial need or if I'm lonely and I want friends or if I'm scared and I need assurance. The Lord will provide, the Lord will provide and that is true. But the Lord will provide primarily means that He would provide a Redeemer, a Mediator. And we serve a risen Savior who walks this earth today. In all who will look at themselves and see that they're lacking, and then look to Christ and see that He and His merit are sufficient to get you to the Father. All who see this rightly are invited to walk in the resurrection of life, to receive from the bread of life, and to receive from the cup of salvation. Today, as we receive in our hearts, spiritually, the sacrament of Christ, may God be glorified. Jesus, our Lord, taking a loaf of bread, He blessed it and He broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken and is given for you. Take and eat all of you. Whenever you gather and you eat from this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And then our Savior Jesus, taking the cup, He blessed it and said, This cup has become the new covenant between God and His people. It is filled with my blood for the forgiveness of sins for many. Take and drink all of you. And every time that you gather and you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Let us pray. Father, as we receive the sacrament in our hearts, the gifts of heaven, the one holy food that draws us together, help us to be nourished and excited and rejuvenated about our future. For Christ Jesus teaches that our best days are not behind us, but ahead of us. Until we walk the streets of gold, Father, let us receive this meal with faith. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior Great. 
greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he My friends, as we celebrate Jesus Christ, His gifts to us, would you please join in remembering our shared faith from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I have the distinct pleasure this morning to share with you the greatest story ever told. We look to Matthew chapter 28 to hear the holy words of Scripture that describe the triumph of Jesus Christ and vicariously our triumph as well. Matthew chapter 28 beginning with verse 1. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb to look at it. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples, Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Before I say anything else, I must say, Jesus Christ is alive. In the words of one of my good friends, Todd Wyrick, every year he says on Easter, Jesus is loose, y'all. He broke free from the bonds of death. 
He entered the very prison that we were living in and the prison we deserved, and He's alive. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, and death has no sway over Him. He cannot die again, and now He holds the keys of hell and death in His own hand, and He controls the universe as He pleases. Jesus Christ, after spending 40, 50 days with His disciples and appearing to about 500 people, assuring them, instilling in them the infallible Word and Gospel of God so that the New Testament could be written for our benefit, He then ascended. After His ascension, since that moment, He's been at the right hand of God. And do you know what He's been doing with His position? He has been using His position before God the Father to tell the Father about you, to constantly pray for His church. Every thought you have, every concern you have, by the time you pray about it, Jesus has been praying about it for you and with you. This Christ Jesus is alive. He's more alive than you or I are right now. He is in heaven and He's preparing a place for us. It's also important to note that the entire Easter account, the story of Jesus Christ being raised from the dead, includes from the dead. The whole setting is in a cemetery. It takes place after a Good Friday. And I think with the state of things going on in our nation, and our world, it's important to point out that Christ Jesus, the greatest day of His glory, is in the background of one of our greatest fears. The virus that we've seen go across this country and affect many Americans has taken people's lives. At the beginning we were talking demographics. Who is it more likely to harm? And I gotta be honest with you, when I found out Guys my age would get it and not come home, leaving widows and children at home without their father. It shook me. When you and I had to face the reality that maybe this thing's not overblown and something we need to take seriously, our entire nation, regardless of our political stripe, regardless of our spiritual background, began to look at death a little bit more closely. You know, our culture is interesting. We don't uh, handle death the same way other cultures do. If somebody's old or dying, we kind of put them off to the side. We have these homes and we put them in there and we act like everything's fine. Even our funeral practices do everything we can to dress it up. But the fact of the matter is, Death is the reality for every single person. Now, people might argue, what's the leading cause of death in Lubbock or Texas? Heart disease? Cancer? Well, the Bible points out that the leading cause of death is Adam. And we might argue about what could cause my demise, what could cause me to draw my last breath. But the reality is, the true culprit is not cancer, it's not lifestyle, it's not tragedy, it's our federal head, Adam. As surely as I stand before you today, I will also surely one day be a dead man. As surely as I speak right now and have life in my lungs and strength in my body, given enough time, I will be lowered into the ground and this tongue will quit and these eyes won't see and these ears won't hear. In the truest sense, you're looking at a dead man talking to dead men. Easter morning, takes place in the place of the dead. For Christ rose from the dead. Now, 
Most world religions and philosophies and spiritual practices will do anything they can except look at death. Some sayings in life are, make the most of your life. Avoid suffering at all costs. Spend your life in the present. Don't worry about down the road. Most world religions and philosophies focus so much on how to make the most of this life that it appears that all of the effort is spent dealing with your life in light of the fact that you will die. But the church spends our effort living our life in light of the fact that we shall live forever. While the world avoids death, creating things like bucket lists and letting death rule over them without ever talking about it, the church instead dives straight in. There has never been a religion, a philosophy, or a great speaker who has done what Jesus of Nazareth has done. The Gospel of Jesus dives right into death. The Gospel of Jesus calls all of us to look at death to recognize that we deserve death and then to show us our Lord and Savior was willing to put on flesh and submit Himself to obedience even unto death and death on a cross. As surely as I will die and you will die, None of us will die like Jesus died. None of us will die on that cross with the scowl of the Father paying for the sins of others. And then Jesus tells the church and all who would listen, if you want to be my disciples, you must lose your life. Unlike all other world religions, the gospel of Jesus Christ embraces death because through Adam it's the inevitable end for all of us. But in Jesus He's redeemed it. In Jesus Christ He has taken death and made it His own so that it no longer reigns. There's three things that we see in the life of Christ in regards to His resurrection from the dead. Number one is He entered the world where according to Romans chapter 5, 14 and 17, death reigned. There are stories in the Bible about powers and strengths that cause us to tremble. Most of us know the story of David and Goliath. Well, there's no greater Goliath than death itself. You might triumph over a certain foe. You might be the better businessman, the smarter person, a more moral person. You might outrun somebody, but nobody would outrun death. Is there a foe so great that nobody has an option but to ultimately submit? Jesus Christ entered the world where there was a mammoth ruler. Though through a curse, this ruler, death, held sway over every man until he met Jesus. Jesus Christ embraced death on our behalf. And upon becoming dead for our sake and being raised from the dead, Jesus Christ put a bit in death's mouth. He wrestled it to the ground. He broke it like a wild stallion. And no longer is death in charge, but Jesus Christ reigns supreme. He is the Lord of lords, the King of kings. And 1 Corinthians 15 says that in the end, He will subdue all of God's enemies, the last of which is death itself. Jesus Christ is the Lord, even over death. 
There was a little girl who lived in New York with her father. This was back when they ran trolley cars. And this car rounded the corner real fast and the girl didn't see it coming and it, it, it frightened her and it was certainly going to hit her. And her father grabbed her and swooped her up and took her in, her, in his arms. And he comforted her with these words, my dear, only the shadow hits you. Because of Jesus Christ and all who are in Christ, none of us are hit by death. Only the shadow. Can you imagine what it would be like to breathe your last and to get hit with the actual full force of the former ruler of this place? The former king that took all men to their knees to be hit with death? Can you imagine? But instead, through Christ Jesus, who faced death for us, we are carried across the pit. We can see it. And boy, if we went to it, it would be bad. But Christ takes us across. Death once ruled, but Christ rules now. The second thing we can see about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is that the death, according to Scripture, is most often given the form of a big river. When the Jews would cross the river of the Jordan to get into the Promised Land, it was always an allegory for us to cross through the river of death into the Promised Land. And it was a big river. It was one you couldn't cross on your own, the river of death. What we see from Scripture is that all men would enter that river before Christ to be swept away. But Jesus Christ is the first person to ever enter that river of death that we could see His footprints all the way to the shore. He stood on the other side. Jesus Christ got across. And Jesus Christ is able to walk on that water. He is not afraid. And He is able to greet all who come to that river inevitably. When you and I get to face those days, when it's our turn, and only God knows when that is, and how you will die, heart disease, cancer, when we make it to that river, because our Redeemer lives, we do not have to go to those waters on the basis of our own strength. For if you enter that water and you look to yourself and you try to swim, you will sink miles deep. But if you look to Christ, as Peter looked to Christ as he walked on the water, if you take your eyes off of yourself and take your eyes off of the waves and put your eyes on Jesus Christ, He will get you safely across. If you do not know Christ, if Jesus Christ is not part of your life, and if you believe that you can swim on your own merit or that you're somehow buoyant because you're a great person, I'm sorry to tell you, you can't make it. But Jesus Christ is glorified to lift up and carry a cross any and all who are willing to confess, I can't swim. But He who is my Savior not only can swim, He can walk across the water as if to Him it's a crystal sea. And this Jesus right now is standing on the other side of the river and He's calling out. He's calling to you, He's calling to me, to all the walking dead as a man who owns death. He's speaking a word and He's saying, from 2 Peter 3.9, My Father, 
wills that none be lost, but all would repent. My Father is rich in mercy, and my hands can pick up as many who will call on me. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is calling across that river. For if you spend your whole life and you never look to Jesus, your nature will be at the end to not look at Him then either. And you will sink. But if you look to Jesus now and you keep growing and you keep striving and you keep clinging on that great day, even if you sink for a minute like Peter and call out, He'll save you. Even if you drop a mile, He'll dive and get you. By His sovereign grace, He carries across all who look to Him in this life to get them to the next. Jesus Christ, our Savior. The one who calls from the other side of the shore. Did not just rise from the dead so that He could be alive, but that many more would come. To this He received glory every time He gets one more across the river. Won't you give Him what He paid for? Won't you give God glory? Not by beating yourself up. Not by feeling guilty. But by looking to Christ. There's a song we sing our children at night. It's a lullaby. Lay down, my sweet John Paul. Lay down and take your rest. I want to lay your head upon the Savior's breast. I love you, but Jesus loves you best. I bid you good night. Good night. Good night. This is the call from our risen Savior this Easter and every day until the end that what no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has imagined, what God has prepared for those who love Him and will receive His Son. Praise God. He has done it. Let us pray. Holy Father, we pray for the power of the convicting Spirit of Christ that we would put our hope in Jesus, the one mediator to bring us to heaven, the one true resurrected Lord. Help us, Father, to not look around for help or to look inside for help, but to look above. May we live life now, pouring ourselves out, forgiving others, dying to self, knowing that we have an inheritance through He who is resurrected and will carry us home. Help us, Father, to be like our great Savior in love and grace. And may we live our life in light of eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, doing an altar call is kind of hard out here because you're supposed to stay in your car. But after the service, I'll be available if anyone wants to pray or talk. If there's anyone here that's listening and has never heard this message or has never heard this message, message like this before by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm here to pray with you and to seek the good things of God for your life. I'll stay right here after service and feel free to drive by and I'd love to say that prayer with you. Our closing hymn, as we respond to the gospel, is written in your order of worship, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. All creation join to say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing, O heaven and earth, reply, Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia.
are. Where all death is now your sting. Alleluia. Jesus died our souls to save. Alleluia. Where your victory for grave. Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led. Alleluia. Following our exalted head. Alleluia. Made like him, like him we rise. Alleluia. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Alleluia. This morning we got going early. I asked the staff to be here at 6.45 and I joked with Jesus in prayer. I said, I know you're raised from the dead, but did you have to rise so early? Well, God bless you all for getting here for our early service this morning. I pray that Jesus Christ, His passion and His resurrection would be yours. Receive now our benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you the favor of His countenance and give you the peace of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.